Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today is a fantastic episode indeed as I am going to show you what I believe could be the last piece of flight sim gear equipment you will ever need for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So stick around guys because I think you're really going to enjoy this one. All right, so first off, let's talk about a few things real quick before we get into this. Um, flight sim gear is extremely expensive, first off. You know, you have your throttles, you have your rudder pedals, you have sticks, you have yokes, you have the Bravos, you have the Honeycombs, you have the Yokos, you know, and then you have MFDs, and then you want radio stacks and all this stuff, right? Now, there's a really cool application called um, Mobile Companion. You know, I use it a lot. And it allows us, using a web page, to control almost every aspect of the sim. Everything from sim rate to the autopilot panel to radio panel, right? And that's very handy. And you can do it from your cell phone, a Kindle, etc. You know, an iPad, whatever it may be. Anything with a web browser. But it lacks luster, right? You, 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 don't, you don't get that same feeling as, you know, playing with buttons and knobs and rotaries and things like that. So... We have a gentleman who has created what is called the Class Echo, okay? This is a touchscreen controller, and it has a kit that uh, you uh, simply order from him. The kit, is this is in Canadian dollars. I believe it's $83.80. Um, now, here's, here's the catch. You know, there are still a few other parts that you need to purchase yourself, okay? And it tells you right here, you know, this, this is not a complete kit, but it does give you a list of everything that you need to purchase. Okay, you can scroll on down and it will, uh, you know, let you know what, what pieces you still need to purchase. It also works directly with SPAD.next. Um, so this is another advantage to those of you who have SPAD already um, to move forward with this particular purchase. This thing is fantastic, you guys. It is absolutely mind-blowing how nice this thing is to have. Okay, and so... The website to this will obviously be down the link in the description below, guys. And for moving forward, I'm going to show you guys, you know, what all it does and give you a demonstration and my personal thoughts of this thing, which obviously you can probably already guess what my opinion of this particular product is. All right. So moving that off the screen for a minute, um, talk about real quick what to expect when you when you get this kit. Okay, so you've bought all the pieces that you need, you you know, and total out of pocket expenditure for the whole thing between the the box, the kit, the wiring, and then you know you have to purchase the uh, touch screen. Um, total out of pocket, I think I'm in for about a hundred and sixty dollars, give or take. You know, but you know based on where you get your parts and et cetera, and you know what the what the price range is based on where you live. Um, but really not bad. So let's call it a hundred, let's call it 180 bucks to be, to be, you know, just a good close number, you know, and that's, a, again, that's a high ball for, for what I paid being in Arizona in the United States. Okay. So you get the kit. Um, one of the things I will give you guys a tip on right away, um, be really careful, um, when, you screw down the LCD screen if you purchase this. Make sure the LCD screen is perfectly flat and in all of its joints before you start screwing things down um, because it does sort of like to pop up a little bit as you start screwing things down. Put it on the same way you put on a car tire, you know, opposing corners, you know, that way it centers and locks down correctly and nice and smoothly. Um, and the other thing is find someone with really small hands, okay? Because if you're like me and you have those monster, you know, gorilla hands, it's a real pain in the back end. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Make it work. But those are my only two complaints that I've got for you. Um, that, oh, actually, I've got one more. Some of the, putting the screws in, this is a 3D printed piece, and so you do sometimes get some flash and things like that down in the threads. Um, so just, you know, be really cautious as you're screwing things in. Make sure you get that bite to line up, um, and then you should be good to go. There's some software you have to download after you register to the ShakePrint website, um, and uh, gives you he gives you all that instruction ahead of time. He actually sends you a message on Etsy when you purchase it. And, you know, a day or two later, you get a message from him letting him know what your next steps are. I thought that was really neat. Now I had already purchased mine from talking to a friend of mine, Katheda. Thank you very much once again. Um, you know, but uh, so I already had the heads up on that, but it was really nice to see that, you know, while you're waiting for your product to come in, he sends you, all right, here's what you need to buy next. OK, you know, while you're waiting for it for the shipment. OK, um, it comes from Ontario, Canada. It took it about little shy of two weeks to get to me. 
Okay, so um, it really wasn't too terrible. By the time it got here, I had everything else um, registered to the website, downloaded the, uh, he has on his website, the firmware you need for the touch screen and the um, uh, firmware you need for the uh, Arduino uh, circuit board. Um, and he's got a real handy tool that does everything all at once. You actually, um, you do need to also make sure you buy a USB 3 cable with a serial port at the end of it. Okay, that's the other thing that you're going to want to make sure you purchase. Um, but uh, all of your updates um, can be done directly from this handy tool that he's got. It, it really was a smooth process. He also has a very awesome installation video, or I should say assembly video, that I will also have linked down in the description below. Make sure you guys check it out so you can see ahead of time how it's assembled and really how simple this works was took me total time between pausing the video double checking what i'm doing you know um it took me about 20 minutes tops to assemble it get the firmware installed and i was up and running um it's been a really fun experience so now let's get into the what you're all here to see and that's this thing in action Okay, so first thing, I do want to apologize for the poor video camera. I'm using my uh, cell phone for this. Unfortunately, I'm not set up for these kind of reviews. Um, I do want to get a nice camera, but uh, it's just not in the budget yet. Um, but uh, anyway, so remember, you do have to have SPAD.next running. I will also link a configuration video that ShakePrint has on its website that shows you how to set up the SPAD.next profile as well. Um, so he walks you through everything step by step. It is a fantastic process. That was very interesting, the plane on the screen there. Okay, so let's talk about what we've got here going on. So first off, you can see up at the top, we have our aircraft tail number. If you look up here on the dashboard on the aircraft here, okay, um, we or our designation, excuse me, we have the Asobo Baron G58 is this. And again, I, I'm not sure how well this is going to come out. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see everything nicely. You have your flap setting. We have our trim setting, fuel, pitot heat, um, oil pressure, all this good stuff, gear, you name it, all that, all your, basically this is your bit panels, what this is, heading, track, altitude, wind, ground speed, indicated airspeed, next waypoint, DME, uh, e ETE and ETA, last waypoint, local time, and your UTC. This is just on the first page, guys. So now we also have some setting configurations. Oh, come on, there we go. You can adjust the brightness. You have your sim rate. Okay, we can change that as well. It also gives you your frame rate right here. So right now we're rocking 48 frames per second. And I know, again, this is probably really fuzzy on the uh, screen here, guys. But trust me, this screen here is clear as glass, which is beautiful. You have a couple of different options that I'll let you guys go through at a later time here. Um, I'm not really too worried about any of that. Go to the aircraft page here. Um, you have a couple of different options here that are awesome. Working title uh, CJ4 support, Aerosoft CRJ support, working title G1000 NXI autopilot values, um, and then workaround for working title G1000 NXI beta. Uh, but however, he also tells you may conflict with aircraft not using the NXI. So a couple of different things there. Going back to our flight info, um, info page. Next, let's go look at, we're going to sort of bounce around for a minute, try to do this in some sort of a... Uh, logical sense here. So now we're going to come down to the systems page here. You can see what we have here. We have our left and right fuel quantity, our tank selection. We can either do left tank and uh, it does work guys. So if we, there's the left tank that we just selected. Here's our right tank turning it on. Okay. Both tanks. Pretty awesome. Pump one, pump two. If you want to do that. Um, flight in, uh, let's see here, what do we got here? A manifold pressure, this is all our engine readouts. So for example, let's just go ahead and start the aircraft. Now this isn't completely negating the aircraft controls here. So let's get the cow flaps down. I'm gonna do a real crappy startup here because I really don't care. My objective here is to show you guys what's going on and necessarily be all particularly thorough here. Um, so let's say we wanna do ignition one. Now the one thing I do find is you do need to get the magnetos out of the off position. At least that's what I'm running into. But once you do that, we can go starter. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, uh, how about we turn some electrical power on? So we come over here to the controls page and go battery. Okay. Now, member, member, you member, we can turn our alternator on. And you can see all the switches activating. I'm pointing at my monitor there. You can see it. You can see all the switches activating. And then, um, Let's see here what else we got here. We can go down to, you guys would bear with me, I'm still learning this myself. Oh, nope, I wanted to be up there. Go to controls, we can go to lighting. We can turn a beacon light on. 
strobe light if you want, your nav light. Okay, uh, if you have a wing and tail lights, you can use those as your landing light or taxi light. Let's go ahead and turn that off for now. Okay, let's uh, move back down to the systems now. Now we can do this, right? And let's just start cranking. There's engine one not running. Uh oh. Let's turn the fuel pump on, prime it. Turn that off again. I'm going to crack the throttle a bit more. And let's give her another go. Come on, little lady. What's going on here? This is the plane. This has nothing to do with this. So let's try this one more time here. Oh, you know what? Let's just set this magnetos to both. Let's just do that. Uh, she doesn't want to come on for me. What am I missing here? Batteries are on. Alternators are on. Cow flaps are open. Throttles cracked. Mixture is full. Yep, full rich. I mean, you guys can see it's working. This has nothing to do with the box itself. This is the aircraft. I'm not sure why she's giving me such a hard time today. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Although I shouldn't be. Let's try giving her another crank. Oh, turns right back off again. All right, plane, you're going to make me mad. Let's just do control E for the start here. I hate it when she does this. I don't know what I missed there, but it's done this to me before. I don't know if it's one of my add-ons that conflicts with it or what, but that has nothing to do with the pl with our box here. So, anyway, you can see here that we have now ignition 2. Let's go ahead and turn that on because we obviously we have that ready to go. So we can do, I should have picked a different plane. For example, the G36 is what I did last night and it worked beautifully. All right, so now if you want to, let's say we want to go to our, let's go back to controls. All right, you can turn your pitot heat on from here. We can also adjust the landing gear. Now, this is probably not our best plan, but, okay, landing gear handle up. Now, this is supposed to be mounted. It's designed to be mounted on top of the Alpha or the Bravo. Um, but uh, I want to do something a little bit differently, which is why I haven't done that. So bear with me on that as well. Um, and then, so we can control our landing gear. Control the parking brake. Your APU, if you have one. All your rest of your anti-ice. Going over to the... Uh, back to the systems panel. Let's see here. What am I missing here? There's one more I wanted to show you guys. Stand by. Ah, there's our barometer. So let's say we have an altimeter pressure today of, you know, 2987 or something like that, right? So we could do that. We can select our vertical speed and select the vertical speed bug just simply by tapping on the box. Adjust that. Our target altitude. Okay. Same thing with the heading, speed, etc. You can do that. There's our yaw damper if you have one. Autopilot master mode. Okay. Your comms and your nav. Same thing. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Great. Check out the uh, transponder. Just tap on the transponder code. We can just type in, you know, if our, you know, transponder is 5, 3, 2, or 1, 7, whatever. Okay. And we can go enter. Boom. There's our transponder. From here, we can select altitude reporting. You know, you can hit your ident if you need to. Radio 1, or let's go COM 1 here, okay? Right, so if we wanted to change our COM frequency, okay, you can just simply tap it by s to swap them. If we wanted to edit them, go to the standby. And again, you know, whatever your COM frequency happens to be. You can go directly to transfer. Or we could do a... Uh, you know, we could do a, um, a standby if we wanted to do that. I mean, this thing is absolutely fantastic. GPS. So this is the other cool one. So pay attention to the monitor more so than anything. So from here, let's say we wanted to mess with the flight plan, right? Um, 
Now, this is like one of the worst aircraft to do, and I hate using the G3000 from this, but this actually makes it a lot better. So first, we're going to select FMS. Okay. Now we're going to select Flight Plan. Okay, you can see the Flight Plan page popped up there. Next, we're going to activate our cursor. Boom. And you can see it flashing there. And then, boom, we can type anything we want in. Now, to move to the next section, this is sort of a little weird for me. I'm like reaching over my microphone, so sorry, guys. I'm going to push in on the rotary and hold it. Okay, so again, this is where it gets weird. Pushing in. Move it over to the next segment. Boom, we're in the next wi window. And I can now adjust the different values. Pushing and holding again, moving over, adjust the different values. Okay, and then when we're done, you know, you just simply press enter, right? And enter again. And you can obviously walk through all the different menus like that at that point. Okay, so there's our menu. We can delete the flight plan, hit enter, boom. Close the flight plan window. Now, let's say we wanted to move over to the MFD on the right there. Just simply type the MFD. Okay, and there's the menu registering there. Let's say we wanted to change the display range. How awesome is that, you guys? Fantastic stuff. Let's go back to the PFD, right? These numbers here correspond with the soft keys down here on the bottom. So, for example, if we wanted to go to the PFD menu, we'd go 4. Okay, there's... And then, like, one thing I always like to do is check my wind direction. And what's that going to be? Number 6? Nope, 5. Boom. Option 3, right? And then we can go all the way over here to 11. Go to the back page. Right, we can go back again. I mean, this thing is beautiful, you guys. It does so much. Everything that we would need it to do. Um, swapping between your, obviously, your nav and your comms. Okay, you can change from nav and comm, right, depending on what you're doing. So if we wanted to go nav, watch the screen up there, because I know my big papa hand's in the way. Look at the nav frequency, the current active, or the standby frequency in the top left. Okay, and then... If I push and hold, again, I can change the larger numbers, as you can see there. So, not pushing changes the decimals. Pushing in and holding, I can change the whole numbers. So, I mean, it's it, this thing is so nice, and it's so convenient, and it does so much. The integration is fantastic. I mean, look what we have down here. G1000, the 530, and the 430. Okay, and then ILS, check this out. This is one of my favorite things. You're, you're in on the ILS approach, right? And you want to be able to see a nice display right in front of you. Like if you have this mounted on your uh, your flight controls or or maybe something you know similar, pop your ILS, boom. You have your ILS uh, targets. Current altitude, your speed, localizer position, track, everything you need. Your radar altimeters, um, so your, your minimums, right? I mean, this thing is just absolutely wonderful, you guys. This is one of the coolest pieces of flight equipment that I have seen uh, run across my channel. Um, and again, Katheta, if you're hearing this, I really appreciate your uh, your showing me this. He he he's the one who told me. He's like, "Hey, you ever heard of this thing?" And then he borderline yelled at me when I told him no. <laughs> Rightfully so too, because I mean, I th he he knew he knew I was going to be all over this. I think. Um, anyway, so this is absolutely fantastic, you guys. I'm really, really uh, stoked by this. Um, give you guys a real quick lift up here. You guys can sort of see how small it is. I mean, you guys already saw my pop of hands, but there you go. You know what I mean? Not very big at all. It's only a four inch display, four and a half inch display, I think, four inch display. Um, and, you know, I was a little concerned at first. At how small the screen was, but it works perfectly. I've had no issues with it, or haven't had any issues with it. Such bad grammar. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. It's 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 absolutely wonderful, um, and I, can't, I just can't say it enough. And and to the developer, uh, great job, man, great job on this. Oh, hey, I wanted to show you now that we have hydraulic power and everything. So trim wheel coming down. There's your trim setting. Perfect example for this, where this is handy right off the bat, is uh, that. Um, Cessna Citation Longitude with the latest uh, patch, we can no longer uh, see the trim setting when we mouse over it. Uh, let's check out flaps. Check that out. Position 1, position 2, also gives you the degrees underneath it. I mean, guys, how cool is this, right? 
absolutely wonderful I'm, I'm oh wind direction how many times have you guys seen me on my videos forget to check ATIS it gives it to you right there before you even get off so if you're like me and you can't stand talking with the in-game ATC you no longer have to um, it, again guys I could go on and on and, and just repeat myself to Ignazium here um, and make you guys just want to scream at me if you're not already but uh, again, so link to the to purchase will be down in the description below. Approximately, let's call it 180 bucks just to be safe, but I think it's less than that. Um, especially if you already have some of the utilities, you know that you'll be surprised how many of the tools you may already have. Um, what is happening over here? Um, anyway, <laughs> um, link to the assembly video down in the description. Link to the spad.next configuration down in the description. Uh, make sure you guys check this out. I really, really think that you guys are going to love this this product. It, it's just it's it's wonderful to have. So once again, to Shakeprint, thank you very much for all your hard work. This is absolutely a, a game changer for sim flight simulation. For those of you who are who are short on space, things like that, you don't have a lot of room to work with. Trust me, this is the answer to to what you need. Um, being able to control everything from you know being able to see your FPS to controlling everything inside the aircraft, pretty much. Um, to being able to control the simulation sim rate. I mean, it goes on and on and on, guys. All in one little five-inch box. Um, so, you guys, check it out. If you already have it, let me know what you think of yours. Um, make sure to pass the, the, the good news on to the community if you guys enjoy yours. And uh, as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, folks.